Good morning everyone and welcome back to the farm. We're back at it this morning pushing on with corn harvest or at least attempting to pick some corn. If it goes anything like the last few days where we shelled corn it has not been good. I'm feeling lucky today and I'm very optimistic that we're going to hammer these fields out get done with the fields in the area that are going to the elevator that's really slowing us down. We've got our backup truck ready to roll so we shouldn't have any bottlenecks this morning. Most people don't start super early so you can get some grain in, sneak it in when no one's going. We're going to get to it though. Before we do, everyone make sure you like the video and leave a comment down below. It is one of the easiest and cheapest ways that you can support the channel. Every time you interact with the video, it helps me out a ton and I'm greatly appreciative. Let's get to it. Much to my dismay, it got down below 50 degrees last night, so I'm gonna give the tractor a few minutes to warm up before we kind of put it to work. It's always nice to be easy on your equipment when you have the opportunity to. There's no reason to be in a tremendous hurry this morning. We've only got a couple fields here left to pick. As long as we get those done today, I'm gonna to be satisfied given how slow we were yesterday. Chris and I seem to be the only two at the field so far this morning which means the combine is unattended. Should we do it? I think we should. There's even corn on the back of the combine. We need to have a talk with the combine operators. As they say, when in Rome. Let's see if we can pick a through or two of corn before the boss shows up. Let's do this. Racers, start your engines. Well, I made it about 20 foot before the boss called me and said wait. So there goes all my fun for the day. Corn's still doing pretty good though. Yield fell off a little bit. We're at 271 dry, 284 wet, about 19% moisture. Hopefully that'll pay for the truck repairs. It could have hopped in the grain cart, but that's below a combine operator's payroll. Oh, back to the grain cart. The backup truck is in action. Hopefully it doesn't fall apart like our others. Oh, that's a bad start to the day for the grain cart driver. I better step it up. Park combine is not good for me. I quite possibly could have set the bar a little too high today. We've already caught the trucks, which means the elevator's slow. Fortunately though, dad's gonna take the truck. We're gonna pick a few throughs with the combine. Good for us. Ring auger's coming out. My, how the tables have turned, grain cart. It's a lot different than what I'm used to. Are we even on the truck? That's a great question. Wow, this is easy. How do the combine operators ever screw this up? There's Jeff with the other semi. Looks like it made it back in one piece. Wow, look at that thing. Just devour grain out of the tank. 3.8 bushels per second. That is incredible. And we are empty. Slow her down so we don't tear the belts up. Gauge a separator. Turn the head on, speed her up, pull her forward, hit number two, that'll engage our auto steer and put her head down. Oh yes, we have liftoff. I want to see this 780 stretch its legs. I don't think anyone else has done it yet. Seven and a half miles an hour, we're in the top 90% of power usage. The core here is running 245, 250, 230, 248, 250. And our throughput right now is 4,500 bushels per hour. Our loss looks good. We're not sending much out the back. Let's just let's give a little bit more stick for research purposes. We're running almost 5,000 bushels an hour. Jeez. 
Dad never takes this thing out for a run. He takes it easy on it. You'll never be able to keep that 784 with an eight row head. What were you saying about that? 4,800 bushels an hour? Some of you probably can't even do that with a 12 row. 5,000, 4,900, 5,200. Now, this may be the best day of harvest for me so far. And someone's dumping the grain cart and it's not even full. Beast. That's not too much. 400 bushel corn. Just kidding, that's just a little bit of a glitch when you start out. It'll find its way back to where it needs to be. 250, 230, 230, 220. Worst part of the field. Oh, there's a 200. 212, 216. We're in the low ground right here. This is where the poor yields are going to be. We are starting to slowly pull that average down a little bit. We're at 269 now. Kind of predicted that the northeast corner of this field, which is more of a pond, isn't going to yield as well. Like I said, though, if 200 bushel, 220 bushel corn is not yielding well, we'll take it. My days here are numbered, though, because here comes a grain cart, which means I'm doing a little switcheroo. Never mind, it's Jeff, not Katie. If I'd known someone was in the grain cart, I wouldn't have picked with my auger in. Take us to the promised land, auto steer. I feel like I need to be wearing my seatbelt. I'm going to give you a quick recipe for predicting the yield this year. If there's ruts, the yield is going to be low in that area. Where is that pesky grain car driver? I'm full. That course not making 340. I'm not sure why it's showing that. Well, there goes their bonus for the day. We'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. this field. I'm going to go ahead and take this to the elevator. 
hopefully we can get done soon. My dad was the last one to drive this truck and he doesn't have the decency to put the steering wheel up. Super trucking, although I have an automatic transmission, so am I really a truck driver? Loading the train, it looks like. Oh, that's not a good sign. Well, there's coolant run down the front of it and we don't have any in the reservoir. You have to make a sacrifice for the cause. Pay very close attention to the temperature here and hopefully get some more water, but obviously there's a major leak going on because it looked like it was completely out of coolant. You cannot have coolant as long as the truck doesn't overheat, but if the truck does overheat, you're looking at the possibility of completely ruining your engine. We've already lost one truck yesterday. I'd hate to lose our other one. Oh, the transmission on this thing is the least reliable thing I've ever seen in my life. The worst part about this weight, other than having to listen to my dashboard rattle, is that I use all my water. So I gotta sit here with a dry mouth. Almost to the pit, and we're gonna have to find some more water. Next up to dump. I stopped up here at the head shed, put about three and a half or four gallons of water in the reservoir, which means that's pretty darn low. I'm gonna start this and rev it up and see if we can see any visible leaks. Obviously, we see the old coolant on the frame, but I'm not sure where it's coming from. I didn't see anything leaking this time, but we'll have to check when we get back to the field. Sometimes you really gotta put some RPMs on it to actually get it to leak again. Hopefully it's a non-issue. I have never disliked anything more than I dislike this semi. It's the one I drive all winter. It is just, everything about it is junk. And it's only got 360,000 miles on the odometer. Whoever had this before us really rode it hard and put it away wet. The first load we hauled with this when it was new to our farm, maybe seven years ago, six years ago, it blew a turbo, cracked the head. Very unfortunate, and it's not been better since. We made it back to the field, so that's good, I guess. We're gonna have to check the coolant again. Looks like the grain cart and the combine are fully loaded and waiting. We've identified our problem. A pinhole, that's more than a pinhole, a couple pinholes right there in the side of the reservoir. Probably not that bad when we're hauling back empty, but when going loaded and putting a lot of pressure on it, it's building up quickly. I loaded our limp truck back up, tried to patch that reservoir with tape. It's just not gonna hold because it's plastic. I have to watch the temperature gauge like a hawk, and then I've got about three gallons of water here. As long as it doesn't overheat and we keep filling it, we should be fine. Emphasis on should be. It's a darn good thing that we've got three gallons of water here because we are going to need every drop of that the way that's coming out. Another long way to Tate and Lyle Coal Station. Trucks are backed up pretty far, although I think they're starting to speed things up. We made it out of there. The truck didn't puke on us, so I'll take that as a victory. I think when we get back to the field, we're going to try and patch it up. This is how the first few days of harvest have gone pretty consistently, or at least for corn. Full combine, full grain cart, broken down truck. At least it's lunchtime. They should have seen it coming out of Cold Station. Man. Out of this hole? Oh, it was like a geyser coming out the front of the truck. You got a knife? I don't want it sharp. I want to scratch it. This is our temporary solution. Or permanent if it holds. Five minutes. Well, we probably should give it more time than five minutes because that's got a lot of pressure on it. But setting and curing are different. You probably should let it cure. Works best if temperature is above 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it's above that there. No, on this side it won't. It will anywhere. Anywhere that the, there's air movement, it's moving air. And now we wait. I thought maybe the stick would be a nice touch to create a cover. There's a lot of pressure in there though, so who knows. We're gonna give it 10 minutes or so and see if it holds. Katie told me that she doesn't mess with the seat, but I can tell when I get in here that the seat has definitely been lowered. Dumping and filling. Dumping and fill, and that's the story of today. Get the truck to the field, load the truck. Load the truck, wait at the elevator. Get back, dump again. The wheel just keeps on turning. I don't have any RV sauce, so lunch is ruined. Just gotta eat this bland roast beef sandwich. How on her job? Dad's got a through and a half left there to pick, so we're gonna get ready to move to the next field. Today has been slower than molasses, much like the last few days. Time to do the truck shuffle. We finished up here on this field finally after two days on 70 acres. They're moving and dad wants me to take this truck to the elevator but I just don't know if I should chance it or not. Not fully dry. Everyone place your bets in the comment section down below if you think that's gonna hold. The little stick is a nice touch. We'll see when we get to the elevator. I'm afraid to get out and check. My gut tells me that we have a high pressure coolant leak coming out the side right now. But I want to be faithful and think that it helped. Not a good sign for our harvesting capacity when our other semi is just two trucks ahead of me. They were supposed to be downloading this train an hour ago. 
I think we're gonna be finding a new elevator soon. This is ridiculous. What a slow day of hauling grain this has been. We made it to the pit, so that's a good sign. I already know the answer to this question, but let's check it out. It held somewhat, but not very much. You can see the red coolant still on the outside. We still have some in the gauge, but I'm gonna go ahead and top it off. I just gotta let the pressure off slowly. And that is why we have this thing. Should last us another load. I'm in one problem and it's back to another. I've been sitting here since 221, waiting for it to go into gear. What a joke, so frustrating. And Dad just thinks that the automatic transmissions are the bee's knees, the least reliable thing we have on the farm. We're at a new field. Just as quick as we came, we're back on the road. Today feels like it's been multiple days and it's only four o'clock. Supposedly the train is loaded at Cole Station though, so maybe we won't have to wait an hour. Took the scenic route to the elevator this time. Maybe this will relax me a little bit. It's slowed down, but I think it's just out of pull. Line's still decently long. Hopefully it doesn't take long for us to get through. Dad told me that the wait was supposed to be over. I think that was a lie. The line's not as long though. I think there's just less people bringing corn in at this point. No, I take that back. We get to cut through because our corn is drier now. This new field must be closer to 15%. The last one was running about mid 18. Everyone on the right side of the line has got high moisture corn, which at this point in the year is probably upper teens, lower 20s. 16.7. I was in and out of there in 10 minutes. Not bad. Gotta add some coolant though. Back at the field again. And just like that, we're done. I'd had some foresight and guessed that I was going to spend so much time in the semi today, I probably would have put on more deodorant. I was not prepared to not have air conditioning for that long, so I've developed a scent. I don't even know what to call this truck. It's pretty much handicapped. The transmission's junk. The coolant reservoir needs fixed. We have a replacement on the way. Our patch job did not even hold in the slightest. We used some JB Weld. I told Dad it needed longer than 30 minutes to dry because it's epoxy. He didn't listen. We sent it and it sent it back. That was a pretty good day's work for me though. Eight loads, nine loads. I think I did seven of those and it was not enjoyable. All right, everyone, that looks like it's going to be it for the night. We're in somewhat of a holding pattern right now. We're not sure that we have any drier corn left to pick. A lot of what's left is going to be going in grain bins, so we really don't want to pick it at 18 or 19 percent. We prefer 16-ish if we can have that happen. We also think we have some soybeans that we'll cut tomorrow, the same ones that we sampled a couple days ago before we got rained out. They were about 16 percent then. We had a long, slow soaking rain on them, so they probably picked up quite a bit of moisture. They've had a few days to dry out, so we think tomorrow they might go. Although there is one major problem, there's a chance of rain in the forecast tomorrow morning. If it rains even a small amount, it is highly unlikely that we'll be able to cut that field of beans. We're just gonna take it easy for the rest of the night and see what Mother Nature has in store for us. I'm not even gonna try to predict what her plan is. It's nearly impossible to do that. I hope it doesn't rain, but whatever happens, happens. We'll roll with the punches. We've had a slow start to harvest. We're picking up speed, working out the kinks. Everything should progress smoothly after this. Or at least I'd like to think that it's going to. That's probably unlikely. Anyways, that's more than enough farming for one video. I'm gonna end it here. I appreciate you all tuning in. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you wanna see more. And comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace.